Yo, make sure to like and subscribe in the next five seconds, then you have the best luck of your life. Yo, what's going on guys? Alright, so in today's video, I pretty much just talk about how I gain arena points, and what's the most consistent way to gain arena points without losing them. Also, the giveaway winner of last video, on Shaker, bro, I DM'd you on Instagram, you did win the $10. Like I said, I'm doing a giveaway every single video, so all you gotta do to enter is drop a like and comment. With your Discord, Twitter, or Instagram. That's pretty much it. You're entered in. Two more things before the video starts is make sure to follow my Twitter. I'm pinning my Twitter in the comments. And also make sure to use code this silo one in the Fortnite item shop. Guys, we just hit over 2,000 supported creator code users. Alright, that's pretty much it, guys. Enjoy the video. Peace. In Division 1 to 3, you get zero bus fare, so you don't have to worry about that. Once you hit Division 4, you finally get your first piece of bus fare, which is 10 bus fare. In Division 5, you get 20 bus fare. Division 6, you get 30 bus fare. In Division 7, you get 40 bus fare. In Division 8 and 9, you get 60 bus fare. And in Division 10, you get the maximum bus fare, which is 70. So my goal is to always get more points than I lose every single game. Since I get 70 bus fare, I try to at least get 3 kills with 4 placement. The first placement in solos is top 25, which gives you 60 points. If you're a player who's having a hard time surviving on spawn, I'd recommend trying to find somewhere super low key. There's so many places to land that no one really goes. In my next video, I'm going to be doing a video on the best landing spots for Arena, but for now, I just decided to go Yacht, because I already know that not that many people go Yacht, and since there's a ton of loot at Yacht, I know I can be set for the rest of the game. Going somewhere low-key is just a safer approach to gaining back your bus fare points, and maybe even getting more. If I'm going to W key in Arena, I always prefer attack, and I just upgrade it to a purple tack or a gold tack, just because when you use the tack, you're allowed to make an edit and instantly shoot. And if you use a charge pump and you make an edit, it takes a lot longer to shoot, so it's a lot easier for your opponent to get a shot off on you. So personally, I prefer the tack if I'm gonna WK. Once I grab the tack though, I always farm up enough mats just so I can upgrade it to a purple or a gold. I always try to upgrade it to a gold though, but if I can't, I'll just upgrade it to a purple and I'll be fine with that. Because the regular tack is very inconsistent. Usually, I hit from 20 to 40 damage. But with the purple or gold, I hit from 60 or more. Right here, a player doesn't see me, so I start hiding behind a gas pump. I notice he has a charge pump, so I try to play very careful. Because if he charges his pump up fully and he hits a shot off on me, it can do so much damage to me, and I can lose the fight. So I try to play it super slow and super smart. He tries to break out, and I wind up putting a cone in his box attacking me. Somehow though, he hits an 80 damage shot on me when I'm behind the wall. The hitboxes in Fortnite are very messed up right now. They can totally miss their shot and it'll still do maximum damage to you. So right here, I'm just taking my time since I have him trapped in my box. I just gotta be careful though since he's charging his pump and waiting for me. Because if he hits a headshot on me while it's fully charged, I'm pretty much dead. Since I have the purple tack, I'm able to break his staircases with just two shots. That's why I also like the tack to Debbie key over the charge pump is because it allows you to take walls or break staircases and place your own right away and instantly get a shot off. Right here I have him trapped in my box so I just decided to heal up. I decided to use two splashes just because the charge pump can do 200 damage when it's charged up and I don't want to risk that. So I try to get all the health I can before I finally go for the kill on him. I noticed that for me, I always end fights a lot quicker when I use the attack, just because the fire rate of it, and if you hit your shots, it can do a decent amount of damage. Since the charge has a high fire rate, I'm able to get a shot off as soon as he comes out of his box. I put a cone in a flat, and I edit, and I shoot instantly. If I had a charge pump, I would have to wait, and maybe my opponent would have survived, because the charge pump takes a lot longer to shoot. Like I said, personally, I feel more confident w keying with attack, so I pretty much just w key everyone. If I had a charge pump, I'd play a lot more passive. Unless I have Kit Shotgun and the Impulse Grenade Launcher. If you have that loadout, you can W key everybody. Another reason why I also like the tack is because if I'm build fighting somebody, I can easily just jump to the side and get a shot off immediately and build right away. If you're ever trying to heal up because you're weak, always use hard mats. I noticed a lot of players in arena would use wood. If you use hard mats, it buys you that time to heal up because it takes longer to break through. So always use hard mats if you can afford it. Because if you use wood, it only takes two swings and they're in your box. Right here, the player cancels my heals and I'm forced to fight him. But since I have attack, I'm able to get a shot off right away when he comes up, and I tag him for 65. A 
lot of the times when I do that exact move that I did on him, usually I get a trade off with my enemy, so I'll shoot them and they'll shoot me, just because the pump takes longer to shoot. I notice that the player jumps down on the side of my wall, so I make an edit, instantly shoot him, cone and fly him and he's trapped inside of my box, so I hold the right hand peek on him and I get an easy kill. I hear a player die right next to me, so I decide to go right over to his mats, just so I can use those mats to rotate to the next zone, and I'm able to save my own mats. After I'm done w -king, I start looking for a charge pump, just because personally, the charge pump is a lot better to use endgame, just because it's so much easier to catch people off guard and get such easy shots on them. So my strat in arena is W key with attack early game, and before I hit endgame, I'll pick up a charge pump. I notice a player places the jump pad right next to me, so I decided to recycle that jump pad. I try to block it off and make it my own, but as soon as I do that, I wind up blocking off another opponent inside of my box, and since he doesn't know I cone the top, he takes the jump pad and I get an easy one pop on him. When you use a jump pad endgame, always go as far as you can to the next zone, so it's very important to keep an eye on the map. Right here, I build out a hard match again, and I hide in the cone to heal up, just so I have that extra protection. As soon as I get into zone, I just wait for next zone to form, just so I can use my jump pad and save my mats. But I wind up landing on a tree, which is unfortunate. I do have a lot of mats, so I'm chilling. Since I have another jump pad, I wait for zone to barely touch me, and I use the launch. Doing a flat launch allows you to get to zone faster without getting beamed from height. I know I need to go up the mountain, so I immediately start covering height just so I don't get beamed. So my only focus is just to get to zone and chill. I notice that zone pulls back, so I'm able to sit in my own box and save mats. I hear a player in the far side of zone, but somehow he winds up dying in the storm. I don't know why. He just sat in the storm and died. I have 300 mats in my name, so I just jump down the hill. I know this player has a grenade launcher, and I know he's gonna try to grenade launch me into the storm, so I just try to block off all angles. Because as you can see, he's trying to jump to the side so he can get a grenade launcher off on me. Just so I can fly into storm. He makes a psycho play and decides to jump down straight into my face and we trade shots. I wait for him to make an edit out of the box and I break the wall just because I know it's weak. Which allows me to get out. As soon as I hit the ground, I try to heal up, but I notice he jumps down with me. So I immediately pull out my shotgun and I get a headshot on him and win the game. Not gonna lie, that guy did choke. He should have won that game. But since I hit the shots first, I won. So if you have good aim this season, you can easily win games. Just a reminder that my next tips and tricks video is probably gonna be the best landing spots for Arena. So make sure you guys have notifications on. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like on the video because it really does help. Also leave a comment down below. That's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.